Hello, I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wald, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and financial I solutions. Try. And Dr. Wald, you also hold several degrees and certifications, right. including board certification in nutrition. Today our topic is natural hormones. We've been getting some emails in um, from people who would like to ask some questions. Uh -huh. One that we have is from Joan. Okay. And Joan would like to know your thoughts about natural hormones. Okay. Joan is wondering why her OB will not recommend them even though she's heard and read about how good they are supposed to be. And she'd appreciate your opinion. But first up, what are natural hormones? That's a great place to start because in a sense there are no natural hormones. There are no hormones in soy products for example or wild yam and many people who are interested in the bioidentical natural hormones think of those foods. Those foods contain uh, compounds, chemicals that resemble hormones. That in a laboratory, with subtle changes in their in their you know composition or chemistry, mm -hmm. they actually become identical to hormones. So, for example, cholesterol in the body is the mother structure, so to speak, that makes pregnenolone, and pregnenolone makes progesterone by just making little tweaks in the molecule, and then progesterone becomes testosterone with just another little tweak in it. Then you tweak it yet again, it becomes one form of estrogen. Tweak it two other ways, it becomes the other forms of estrogen. So in plants, there are similar structures like cholesterol in the body that um, they, they, uh, you can build hormones on them. So really, there are no natural hormones. There are hormones that may have started from certain compounds in nature, but then they're manipulated in a lab. Mm -hmm. Now, we should distinguish between bioidentical hormones, because that's the, you know, the, the, the term out there that really gets a lot of attention. So bioidentical hormones are synthetic hormones, but they're identical to a man or woman's hormones. So the pharmaceutical companies, because these are prescription items, might take... Uh, again, uh, wild yam or, or soy-based products, and then a lab manipulate them with some enzymes, and then they make them into actual hormones. So they can now call them natural because technically the it starting material was natural. Sure. But I think the benefit of the bioidentical hormones, which are truly not natural, as I said, they are synthetic. They are friendlier physiologically in the body because you know men and women's bodies have evolved to certain hormones. The synthetic type hormones used by let's say OBs and endocrinologists and some other doctors they start with the basic hormone structure but they're pharmacologically managed in a way that makes them much much more powerful than our own endogenously produced hormones that means the hormones that we produce in our bodies bioidentical hormones being more natural because they're identical to the ones that our body makes they're not as powerful but they're actual hormones. They just may take a, a little bit longer to kick in. But those of us in this field of natural medicine believe that the bioidentical hormones are a lot safer simply because we've evolutionarily developed in a way so that we know how to deal with bioidenticals and not these natural things with a bunch of added molecules that you do not find in nature to get very quick effects. So that would be the so-called hormone replacement therapy, okay. which is really not replacing anything. It's substituting. So, you know... We have side effects and issues associated with these uh, these uh, hormones, whether it's birth control pills or hormone replacement therapy of different types. Uh, we know there's an increased risk of, let's say, uh, estrogen-related cancers, and uh, in, in women in particular, breast cancer, uterine cancer. We know that estrogens, particularly these very powerful estrogens in the form of certain drugs like Premarin, which is basically estrogen derived from horse urine, that's meant to grow you know, a larger animal to manage that. You put that in a human being, you know, you can develop uh, tumors literally overnight uh, with with these products. So we try to avoid those. And those that uh, those people that see us, of course, want these so-called bioidentical, natural dash synthetic hormones. They just make a lot more sense physiologically. I should mention too with Joan. So she'd like to know again when I think about the hormones. I think that hormones are a very important part of longevity, healing. Hormones are not just for regulating the menstrual period. You know. You need hormones for memory, for repair of all body systems. So, you know, hormones like testosterone, for example, we need that for bone density, keeping lean body, uh, organ muscle on, which burns fat. So, you name it, hormones play a role in it. 
depending on the hormone we're talking about, receptors, which are areas on cells of different tissues that uh, that recognize hormones, you find that virtually every tissue requires one or more hormones. So we need it for <clears throat> overall health and, and well-being. So, so John, that's that's my thoughts about the importance of hormones. Now, you're wondering why your OB is not on board with this. It sounds fantastic. So, so why wouldn't they? Um, well, so what I'm seeing so far, though, Cassie, is that there are um, drug reps that would go into, let's say, an OB's office or an endocrinologist, and they're starting to push so-called bioidentical hormones because the demand is there based on, you know, on the consumer end of things. So that's one way to change things. But overall, though, my experience by talking to, to patients and, and, and traditional doctors that just recommend regular hormones is they are starting to um, provide women with bioidentical hormones, but they don't really know how to do it. So you certainly yeah. want to seek out someone who, who does that as part of uh, usually a longevity practice, which means someone uh, who is trained in the use of these bioidenticals for reducing disease risk, giving a person something that is bioidentical, the lowest amount possible for the maximum benefit. And a lot of the synthetic non-bioidenticals, the dose are just too high. And they're based on uh, the dose recommendations that the pharmaceutical manufacturers themselves recommend. So doctors usually just follow oh, that. Yeah. It's not a lot of thought in between. Um, so, Joan, I would agree with what you stated in your question that bioidentical hormones are particularly important. Uh, there's lots of research out there that shows their importance, which unless your OB or endocrinologist or whatever doctor you're seeing is interested in that topic, uh, they, may not, they may not know about. So this is, of course, a big part of what we do here. So lots more on our website at www.intmedny.com on bioidentical hormones. Lots of articles and audios as well. So we'll leave it there, John. Hope that helped. 